One thing about collecting collectibles, that's why they're called collectibles, because you collect them, is people often ask, what is your favorite? And I've done tons of different videos. Like here, I talked about my favorite statues, which of course changes from time to time because very often I get a new ones, or sometimes my preferences just change. I also did a video on autograph memorabilia, you can check it out right here where I talked about my favorites, and that really hasn't changed too much. But over the past few years, I bought a couple hundred CGC comic rated slabs to pair with my statues, or just hang on the walls. Check out this video right here, it talks about that more in depth. But today, we're gonna talk about which one of those are my favorites and why, and you won't believe some of the reasoning. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, my name is Mr. X. This is the Extreme Channel. We're about extreme collectibles. Today, we're specifically focusing on graded comics. So these are comic books like these right here that are in a case and a third party authenticates to make sure they're real and to check what kind of condition they're in. People collect these for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they do it as an investment. Some of these are worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Now when I say these, not the ones I have. The most expensive one I have is around seven or 8,000, I think. And believe it or not, that's not in the countdown today is one of my favorites. Some people collect them out of nostalgia. We're gonna talk about that today. Some of my favorites are because they are some of my favorite stories. And some collect them because they are technically works of art. A comic cover can be pretty badass. And as I said in the intro and that previous video, if you caught it, I collect them for two reasons. One, I like to display them on the wall, whether they're nostalgic to me or I just really like the cover or the character. And two, a lot of these high-end statues that I collect that I do so many videos on are actually based off specific comic covers, so I think they pair really well together. As I said, I own about 200, and today I wanna look at my top 10 favorite. But before we do that, there's a few I'm on the hunt for that would probably be in the top 10. So first, let's check those out. Right here, and this one I can actually find pretty easy, but I love the cover of Morbius number four. So I'm a big Morbius fan. I own all the comics, the originals. I actually still have this, not graded, but I would love to have this in a 9.8. 9.8 is kind of the highest rating you can get. Another one I also own the comic for, but it's not graded, so technically I could send these in, but is what if Wolverine was king of the vampires? This was one of my favorites growing up. I remember buying this. Probably when I was about 10 years old, I remember how badass the cover looked. And again, I own it, just not in a graded format. And same thing can be said about Silver Surfer number 49. I love the storyline on this. I love the cover. I actually have one in my top 10 that has a similar light cover, which we'll talk about. But I am on the hunt for this in a 9.8. I just can't find it. And again, I could send in what I have and hopefully the grade gets there. As we jump into my top 10 today, that's what the stack is right here. We're gonna talk about why that's in the top 10, what I like about it, and some of them are just stupid reasons. But then as collectors, we're pretty stupid anyway. So number 10 is actually Silver Surfer number 65. And I like this for a few reasons. Number one, I think the cover's kind of badass. Number two, I remember buying this one when I was young as well. I bought almost every Silver Surfer comic I could find. I thought the cover looked great. And the storyline, while I read it today, is a little hokey. It was cool back in the day. So this comes in at number 10. Number nine is a newer one. It's King in Black. So I love the King in Black storyline. I actually haven't read all the comics. I stopped reading because I know an omnibus is coming out here in a few months. But King in Black is about Noel. He is actually the god of the symbiotes, one of the most powerful Marvel villains we've ever seen. And he fights everybody, X-Men, Avengers. Obviously, he's related to Venom with symbiotes. But this is actually King in Black number three, and it's a variant cover by Kirkham. And I actually have this autograph. So these are Donny Cates stories, if you're into that stuff. I love Donny Cates. I love the out-of-the-box stuff. I don't love everything he does, but the reason I love this so much, it really shows the power of Noel. He's kind of taking over the world, and it's just a badass-looking portrait of him because sometimes he looks a little goofy in the comics. So this comes in at number nine. Number eight is one I don't really like the storyline or the cover, but it's Silver Surfer number one. Silver Surfer is my absolute favorite character, so I could not not have this in the countdown. This is the first Silver Surfer comic. Not that he appeared in, he actually appeared in the Fantastic Four, and I have those comics as well. They're not in the countdown today, because again, I'm not a huge fan of the actual storylines. This storyline was a little dull to me, but it was the start of my favorite character. So that's why Silver Surfer number one comes in at number eight. Number seven is Hulk 393. 
Now, the reason why I like this so much is I, I have a lot of nostalgia. Once again, I remember saving up enough money to buy this in the comic shop. It was called Dragon's Lair. And again, it's just an absolute killer cover. I actually have it paired with XM Studios Hulk Transformation. You can check out the review right here because it's kind of that same similar format. And I really like the modernized Hulk quite a bit better than some of the early Jack Kirby work. And I think this exemplifies that really well. So Hulk number 393 comes in at number seven. Number six is number six for a few different reasons. It's Silver Surfer number three. It's our first appearance of Mephisto. I was a huge fan of Mephisto. Mephisto is a devil-like creature. He kind of exemplifies the devil, but he's not really the devil in Marvel. This is the first appearance of him. It's the third Silver Surfer comic. So it has some decent value to it. Plus the cover is really cool. And I just always like the battle between Mephisto and Silver Surfer. One of the reasons I've talked about this before, I like Silver Surfer because he's kind of the opposite of everything I am. He's very humble, he's very powerful, and Mephisto always tried to exploit that and they were forever enemies. So Silver Surfer number three comes in at number six. Number five is Silver Surfer number 23. Now this, the only reason this is here is kind of like number 10. I really love the cover of this. It looks badass. Silver Surfer is gonna go to town against a monster. I remember buying this one as well. The storyline's kind of eh. I always felt like that, like comics would have a great cover and then you get in there and the storyline that covers the cover is usually only like one or two pages and it's kind of dull sometimes, but this is still pretty badass and I know you probably can't see it here, but he says, Surfer to stop my killing, you'll have to kill me and Surfer didn't like to kill people, but that's why Silver Surfer number 23 comes in at number five. Number four is kind of a cheat and it, because it's two and one, because I think they pair really well together. While they're different comics, Thor number nine and Thor number 12, they are actually kind of paired off against each other. So you see Silver Surfer and Thor are about to fight and it's really reminiscent because Silver Surfer number four, that's which I also own, it's not in the countdown, they fought as well. So two kind of cosmic powers. They, you can see the reflection of each character in their forehead. I think it's pretty cool. They just pair so well together. They're two awesome characters, Marvel characters, and I'm a big fan of these. So these come in at number four. Number three is Venom Lethal Protector number one. I love these. I've probably read the Lethal Protector series probably 500 times in my life, especially as a child. It's what really made me fall in love with Venom. He's my second favorite character. This is number one, so it's the first time he ever had his solo series. And I really love the character development of Eddie Brock. This is when he kind of turned into an anti-hero. He tried to do the right things. This is the gold foil variant. It's much more rare. It usually comes in red, which I also own that in a 9.8 as well. But I love Bagley's portrait too. Bagley is the artist that drew the portrait. I love this kind of portrait on Venom. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So a lot of different reasons this one comes in at number three. I love the cover. I love the storyline. There's a lot of nostalgia behind it. And of course, I like the value of this too because it's decent. Although it seems like it's been going down in value lately. I think I've, I've seen it for sale for like eleven dollars or $1,200 where at one time this was going for $2,000. So just kind of a proof that comics aren't always a good investment. Now, my number two and one are for interesting reasons. My number two is simply because I think the cover is unbelievable. And it's a variant cover, but it's King in Black number one. And it's another Kirkham. I love this. This looks so freaking cool. I love the representation of Noel. You have the wings here that alludes to Venom. Venom, a great portrait of Venom actually in it, all on top of a pile of skulls. This looks so cool. I love the cover so much. And again, I like the King in Black story quite a bit. Definitely a big fan of this. This is why it comes in at number two. Probably, arguably, my favorite cover if you looked at just the art. Now, if you've watched some of these other videos, you know what my number one is. It's my number one for multiple reasons. One, I think the cover is really cool. It is a Silver Surfer, but I love the storyline. It's one of those I could read over and over. And again, it's Silver Surfer number 59. So this is a storyline where Nebula actually has the Infinity Gauntlet. And so the Defenders, like Doctor Strange and quite a few other characters, they get a team of people to go after Nebula because she is too powerful. And two of those people are Thanos and Silver Surfer who are mortal enemies. They're kind of preparing or battle planning to go out there. Of course, Thanos and Silver Surfer are going at it. So Doctor Strange sends them to an alternate dimension to fight things out. And they do it like night style. So they have horses and armor and you actually see them battle it out. Now with that being said, I'm gonna say a spoiler. So if you, if you plan to read this and you don't wanna hear the spoiler, just fast forward 30 seconds. 
However, what happens is, of course, Silver Surfer actually has the opportunity to kill Thanos to overcome him, but he doesn't kill and he takes mercy on him. So the second he does and Thanos pretty much yields, Thanos turns around and beats Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer states that Thanos is better and Thanos beat him, so they can put it to bed. Not they can go to bed together, although that could have happened, kind of the hate for him each other. You know, and it is 2022. They kind of would make a cute couple. But, uh, so I have two of these. One of them is autographed. Uh, the other is a 9.8 here, but this is definitely my favorite in my collection without a doubt. Now, the interesting thing about this is some of the ones we looked at were worth $1,000, $1,500. I think that Venom is probably the most expensive one on my top 10. This you can probably get for $100 or so. So my favorite ones aren't necessarily tied to a large dollar amount. Probably my five most expensive ones weren't even in the top 10. I didn't even consider them, honestly. So with that in mind, what is your favorite comic out there? It can be for any reason. It can be the storyline. It can be the cover. It can be some sentimental value to you. Maybe you just like it the best because it's the most expensive. Put that down in the comments below because we give away a ton of statues here. And that will enter you into a contest to possibly win a statue. We will be giving all of these statues away plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Hey, I know it's not the usual video, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please hit that like button, it really helps. I got a ton of cool stuff upcoming, so make sure you've hit the subscribe and that bell notification so you know when that drops. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.